everyone. Welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to talk about Hampton's newest brewery. It's Oozle Finch, located at Fort Monroe. And I have with me today the owner and the brewmaster. Welcome, Russell Tinsley and Austin Shawinski. Let's talk about this. We have yep. been so eager for you to open. Like, this has been mentioned for a long time. There's pent-up energy and demand, right? right? You're we, open now. Yes, we're fairly close to opening, so yes. <laughs> when we tape this. But by the time it airs, yes. you'll be open. People can be there. That's right. Yep. Well, we are... Uh, we are ready to, to open up and, and uh, let everybody come in and try what we have to offer. So. so what gave you the idea and where did you get the name Oozle Finch? There's, there's all kinds of interesting things right. in the background here. So uh, back when I started talking to Fort Monroe about this whole concept, it was December of 2012. And uh, when we spoke with Glenn Oder about it, he basically asked that we um, try and pick a name that, that coincides with the fort and try and bring some, some attention to the fort, which we wanted to do anyways and kind yeah, of play off fit. local history and so um, the name Oozle Finch was created uh, basically it was in 1905 there was a uh, uh, an officer drinking at the officers club which was in the old casemate museum and uh, he walked outside saw this this crazy looking bird that he come in and it, he explains to everybody kind of becomes a joke in the in the in the officers club um, eventually becomes the mascot of the officers club and <laughs> still to this day has worked it worked its way to being the mascot of the army artillery uh, which i think is in california now so um but that's oozle really finch neat. has some deep roots deep roots and it started all on fort monroe that's a great that's a wonderful story and it, and it does tie in what building are you in if I hate to ask this because they all have numbers right. and nobody, right. <laughs> except for the military people, know yes. what it is. So, so our address is a new address. It's 81 Patch Road. We're on we're on Patch Road, but it used to be Building 12. It was a one time a gymnasium. It was the base, ex, like liquor store exchange. And uh, oh, that's um, just a perfect yeah. fit, isn't it? And so it, it had quite a few uses in the past hundred years. So. And your background, how did you come to this as a as a career field? Um, how, while, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was a home brewer. I have a passion for craft beer. I love beer. And, uh, um, and I was working in the police department in Newport news and, and, uh, went through some experiences. I, I just, I guess you could say I experienced far more than I wanted to. And so I, uh, my wife and I decided it was time for a change. We wanted to start a business and, uh, I figured that I'd might as well follow a passion that I had and, and that was beer. And so, uh, we secured, a investors and partners uh, of ours, who's a local doctor here, Tony Carter, and his wife, Allison. And once uh, once they got on board, it kind of took off from there. And so uh, we ended up hiring Austin about three months after after Allison and Tony came on. And, uh, now, and how'd you here find we are Austin? So, uh, we met through a mutual friend that knew Austin. And uh, Austin at the time was working at St. George, who uh, was here a second ago. and. And uh, we heard some really great things about him. He brought some beer over, let me try it. And, uh, and we wrote him a contract the next week. So um, I can let him tell you more about it. Yeah, tell me, that. Austin, how you got into um, beer making. Sure. So um, I think my first homebrew was in college and fermented out in a closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't good at all. Um, oh, really? Was it legal on your campus or not so much? Um, it was. We won't say. No okay. comment. <laughs> Um, but then um, professionally brewing, I got started at St. George here in, in Hampton, and I learned copious amounts from uh, Mr. Andy Rathman down there. I've probably, he's probably forgotten more about brewing than what I know right now. So wow. um, I owe a lot to him for sure. And then uh, while I was brewing with St. George, I attended the American Brewers Guild in Vermont and uh, finished with a degree in brewing science and engineering with them. And after I finished that, um, that's when Russell and I kind of stumbled upon each other, and the rest is history now. It's a little bit overwhelming. Like, I am not a beer expert, but even I know that there's this, things called beer are really list of things that are, are very broad and right. very different. Right. So how do you decide what you're going to make? Um, a lot of the beers, well, all the beers that we have are beers that I just 
like to drink. I mean, beers mm. that I think we, yeah. <laughs> All you of start us. with what you like. I want to make something that I, I think or know that I'm going to enjoy. And we kind of build on that and we, we powwow as a team and figure out what's working, what's not working. And we kind of change and adapt our recipes to get to where we are today. So it's kind of a blessing in disguise having that long delay because we were able to really perfect our recipes and get them where we want them. So when we start to open up, we're good to go. So what, what brews will you open with, or are you opening with? So we have, <laughs> I'll tell you the names of them. We've got, so we have seven beers we'll be starting with. We have Sergeant Patches, which we brought a little bit of today, and that's our Pineapple Grapefruit IPA. We have our Lady in White, which is our Hefeweizen. Um, and, and we're going to talk more about those later. Yes. Maybe sample them. <laughs> oh, definitely. And um, we have an American Brown that's called uh, Racing Submarines. We have a uh, Imperial Porter called Oxcart. We have a Session IPA called Short Fuse. We have a um, Stout. Yeah, a Stout. It's called Moat Monster and <laughs> the Saison. The Saison. Yeah, we have an, uh, we have an Apricot Saison that is. Um, okay, what is that? I've never heard of that. Oh. Sure. Um, so the saison, it's it's similar to uh, it's similar to a hefeweizen. If you're familiar with hefeweizen, um, it's a it's a wheat beer, and it's tend to have a little bit to like a phenolic or like a clovey, spicy character to it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. And the names of all your brews, I can tell, yes. are tied into Fort Monroe. Right so exactly. easy. Moat Monster. Uh, easy. Yeah. Sergeant Patches is one of our favorite stories is uh, Sergeant Patches. He's basically, it was a dog that they used to tether his collar and leash to the, to the guns and they'd give him the command after they aimed the gun and, and got it ready. And he would walk backwards and pull the, uh, pull the trigger to the, to the guns and shoot the guns over the Chesapeake Bay. And really? so, yeah. So, and they named him Sergeant Patches. And so that, that's, uh, this is, one of our favorite beers and and that's one of our favorite stories and so that's one of the that's how that one got its name you know we have beers from uh one of them is called ox cart which is uh um there was a a lady who was back right after slavery was abolished she was uh selling pies on an ox cart in uh on fort monroe and so she would make pies every day and take her oxen cart into the into the base and sell to the soldiers and so our, our goal with that beer is to kind of um, do some seasonal pie flavors and and play off of that and so everything with us has wow. a local story and has wow. some history in it and so we we really want to one of our goals was to focus on the history focus on the community and and uh, just you know bring bring some of that to light so people know these stories and and want to come and visit Fort Monroe and and spend time there and hopefully come see us as well so yeah so um how how will your beers be distributed obviously you can go there and drink on site right, right? that's the easy part right. <laughs> you're definitely. gonna have tasting we're gonna be able to walk through De um, yeah definitely um we will have all more beers on site than, than we will distribute. But right now we signed with a local distributor, M. Price, who's located in Hampton. Right, right. Yep. And so M. Price has, uh, they started shipping our beer out last week to restaurants and we've had a very, very, very um, good, I guess, uh, response from that. So uh, the demand better has been- Better than you expected? Far better than we expected. The demand is just through the roof for us right now and we, we're excited about it, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's gonna, we're gonna have to play some catch up. Now, you, so. That's what I was gonna say. Are you gonna be able to keep up, <laughs> yeah. Austin? Uh, <laughs> yes. I think gone are the uh, eight hour work shifts now. I think we've, we've moved well beyond eight hour right. days and wow. no longer is it a five day work week. So distribution wise, it's gonna be on tap probably. It will, um, right. You do growlers, do you do, I see you do cans, yes. big cans. So we do these crowlers on site. The crowler can is in, interesting because it's, uh, Basically, we fill it from the from the bar tap, and then we will. We've got a machine that seals it right in front of you. So every time you come in, if you order a growler, it's not as big as a growler. It's half the size of most growlers. It's a hefty size. Yeah, so yeah. it's 32 ounces, which is equal to, to two beers. And so, um, if you're looking for something smaller, you don't necessarily you're not necessarily going to drink, uh, you know, a whole growler of beer. Then then mm -hmm. this this would be your best bet. And, uh, and so we have those. We'll offer the 64 ounce growler and growler fills as well. Um, and then for distribution right now, we're just distributing um, on, uh, on tap. 
And so we, we have a bottle filler that we're ordering and that will be here soon. So we will be putting some uh, special releases out, I guess, um, probably in the next couple months uh, through the distributor. But for the most part, it'll just be found on tap in, in local retail shops. Okay, so let's pop one. Go ahead. Go for it, Austin. You said you're a Hefeweizen fan? I am. I want to start with that. And let's tell this. While he's pouring, you tell us the story of Lady in White. I think okay. a lot of people know, but not everybody. Yes. So the Lady in White is said to be a ghost that uh, supposedly haunts the Fort Monroe area um, inside inside the moat. And so there's a couple different oh, theories God, as sipping, to who it sipping. is. That's a, that's a sip. <laughs> So there's a couple different theories on the lady in white and who she is, and uh, we uh, one is a uh, uh, basically a lady who got caught up in a bad situation with her husband and and her boyfriend, and the other one is that potentially it could be a uh, or the ghost of uh, Jefferson Davis's wife, who used oh. to live on the fort and when he was in prison there, and so um, that's the one I think I. I would tend to <laughs> tend to believe more. So. But I mean, this is like, people. A lot of people ha have seen her. I mean, right. it, It's a really um, I, yes. I have prevalent. To, exactly, and and I'd have to say that it's not something I personally really believe in. But um, we have had people show us pictures of a lady standing in a window in one of the old houses, and I've seen the pictures, and so it's. Uh, Semi-compelling. <laughs> Nothing we want to mess with. Right. So Lady in White goes with the half of ice and the more the color. Correct. The... Hazy. You know, mm -hmm. it, it really has that hazy, hazy look. And so we were kind of playing off the, the, you know, the ghost uh, feel of that. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's let you this. try it. Okay. Can we all get to try? Yeah, yeah of I course. think so. Of course. Congratulations. Thank you. How about that? We start Thank with you. that on your opening. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> Amazing, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so t tell me a little bit more. First of all, tell people what a Hefeweizen is and you're using Virginia grains. Yeah, um, so Hefeweizen is a, uh, is a German style wheat beer. Mm. Um, and it means just a uh, wheat beer with yeast. So that's why the beer is so cloudy is there's still uh, yeast present in there. It is a highly carbonated beer, uh, medium to light body. So it is gonna be very refreshing. Uh, ours specifically, you get notes of like clove and banana. And then the um, just with the whole craft beer scene and trying to support local, we really wanted to brew a beer that supported the state of Virginia. So we got 49% of the malt bill that goes into this beer comes from Copper Fox malting out of Sperryville. And that is Virginia grown wheat and Virginia malted wheat. So it uh, comes from about an hour away from here. and. That's really we neat. It here. So we, nope. we wanted to keep a beer local and support the state as much as we could. So do you think as, as craft beers grow in popularity in Virginia and there are more, are you going to see more farms that, that support you? You know, the way when a big business comes to, when Cannon came right. to, to Newport News, you got their suppliers in. Are, is it going to change the landscape of, of growing in we Virginia? We would really hope so, yeah. I mean, we would love to have more offerings as far as hop farms that are local. I mean... Or, you know, there's a... Or at least regional. I mean, right, North Carolina, right, too, right. has a lot of... Exactly. Mm -hmm. So more regionalized uh, hop farms or even the grain that we use being, being local, which the uh, Copper Fox, they use all Virginia grain. And so anything that we get from Copper Fox is, is from the state of Virginia. And yeah. so... Everybody seems to want to eat local, and we really want people to drink local, too. So That is so cool. Yep. Okay, well, I'm just going to sit back and sip. No. <laughs> what else do you want to tell us about Oozle Finch before we close? This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't mind trying the grapefruit one sometime, yes, too, because that's a little bit. I mean, an IP is going to be a lot heavier, right? I mean, you uh, tell me. I, I am a... So, uh, our IPA, it finishes, um, it finishes very clean and very dry, so it is a pretty refreshing IPA. Um, it, it comes in at 88 IBUs, which is a, a bittering unit. The higher the number, generally, the more bitter the beer is going to be. Um, so, okay, so 88 is? Uh, the bitterness okay. of the beer. But compared to? Take. Compared to this, this comes in at 11. Oh. <laughs> so, so no okay. Yeah, so, right. it's, so not much bitterness in this beer um, versus our IPA is quite a bit higher. Um, but it's still very clean, very refreshing, and like very floral and citrusy. 
That's what I was going to say. It would be that balance once yeah. you get the, the citrus in there. That's really interesting. You yep. guys are doing fun Definitely. and different things. Now I can see we, why people are into the beer thing. Yeah, we, we're excited. and uh, I think when you grow up on, oh, I shouldn't say grow up, but, you know, when, when you have the mass-produced American beers that are all, you know, kind of the same, right. or you, for diet purposes, switch to the light beers, which have, you know, very little going on, right. if I can say that. These are so different. Yeah, they are. Well, congratulations Thank you. on your opening Thank you. and good luck on the future. <laughs> I hope you get a lot more distribution and a lot more a lot more visitors. It'll yeah. be a wonderful tourist attraction, you know, like St. George's has been. And um, and maybe this will be the start of more regional and Hampton beer festivals and uh, all kinds of great local products right here in Hampton. We yes. really hope so. Thank you so much Definitely. for coming. And thank you. Sorry I have my beer in my hand, but you can't talk about a brewery and not taste what they're doing. And I do encourage you to go out to Fort Monroe, taste, sample, tour, and enjoy one of the great products made right here in Hampton. Thanks for watching.